Hi guys, this is um, your friendly maths teacher, Jerry, again, um, recording this one from home using the FaceTime camera and the microphone on my Mac. So this is not going to be as professional <laughs> as the other two, but hopefully it will be a little bit instructive and uh, somewhat, somewhat educational. Um, I put some, I, get, I sent you some email about the Khan Academy matrices stuff, which I think is pretty good. And there's lots of kind of interactive exercises there, so you can maybe do that. But let me just continue on where we left off from last day. And what I want to talk to you today about are um, summarizing matrices. So I'm going to come up here and write, if I can. So this is summarizing matrices. So the problem is, basically, if you have a big matrix, you've got lots of numbers. And you want to take all the information that's in that matrix and scrunch it all up, condense it into maybe a single number. Because as human beings, we love single numbers and we hate collections of numbers. So if I give you an example of a matrix here, maybe 3, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. And let me call, it the let me call that matrix A. You'll see there matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix. And it's got nine entries. So you've got nine century degrees of freedom here, which is okay. It's not enormous, but typically now these days in engineering systems, when you're modeling an engineering system, you won't have a three by three matrix summarizing what's going on. You might have a million by a million matrix going on. You know, because as, as, you know, as computing power becomes, as computers become more powerful um, and engineering systems simulation becomes more realistic, the matrices that you're dealing with are enormous. And from this huge, big in matrices that you encounter in practice now, you want to kind of summarize what's going on within the matrix. One way to do this is what's called taking the trace. Okay, so the trace of the matrix A here is, and the shorthand for the trace is TR. So that's read as the trace. T or A C E, you probably can't see that. So the trace T or A C E of A in mathematics is written like this: the letter T, the letter R, and the matrix A. And what it is, it's very, very simple. So what you do is you look at the elements in the main diagonal, which is our three, one, and six in this case, and you just simply add them up. So the trace of A in this case is 3 plus 1 plus 6, which is 10. So that gives you some information as to what's going on in the matrix A. Now, the problem, of course, is that it ignores all the other six elements. So you're getting some information about, about, from the matrix, about the matrix, from the main diagonal, while you're ignoring all the other six elements, which is, you know, not great. And there's a way of getting around that, and that's what we'll do next. But for the moment, I just want you to look at this and make sure that you're happy enough with doing this. Now, of course, all the matrices that we're dealing with from now on are going to be square because you can only get the trace of a square matrix. And because we're only going to be dealing with square matrices, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the trace of the matrix is just what you do is you just get um, the main diagonal elements and simply add them together. If this comes up in any exam, it's a shame, it's a crime not to get the marks for it. Now, I do appreciate, and if you look at it, there's no technical difficulty here. All there is is just a, um, you have to cram this into your brains. That's basically it. So the trace of the matrix A is the sum of the main diagonal elements. That's all it is. Now, if you look at, uh, here's an example I prepared earlier. If you look at this matrix F, you see here, now this is a four by four matrix. And in addition to number, the numbers one and zero, you've got the symbol K. Now, K could be either a constant or a variable. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to get the trace of the matrix F, all you do is you look at the four elements in this case along the main diagonal, and you add them up. So you get one plus six K plus K squared plus K, as you get here. And then if you're good looking, we talked about this in lectures, you can add the 6k to the 1k to get 7k and represent them as 1 plus 7k plus k squared. So depending on what k is, 
the trace of f will change. But what's nice about this is that you're taking a complicated four by four matrix involving ones and zeros in case, and you're reducing it in some sense to just a single um, scalar expression. Okay, so it's a single number. Once you know what k is, you're going to get a number here, and that's great. So you're taking 16 numbers, and you're condensing those 16 numbers into a single number, 1 plus 7k plus k squared. Okay, so that's what that's the first thing that we're, we've done. So the, that, that's a, it's a very simple operation, but again, it's something that you need to remember. And now the problem with matrices is that there's lots of terminology, and there's lots of simple recipes, and you have to put all that stuff into your brains. That's basically it. So there's no, technically there's nothing really that difficult, but there is a lot of it. That is the big problem. So that's the first thing about summarizing matrices. That's the first part of it, the trace. Now, the second part is the more um, common way of summarizing matrices. So I'm going to do summarizing matrices two. You calculate what's called the determinant. This is very important. Um, you will see this as you go through your engineering education. And you need to be able to calculate what, what a determinant is. Okay, so the term basically is a way of summarizing a matrix, taking into account all the elements in the matrix. You remember back here, this example here, we didn't use all the elements. We only used the ones along the main diagonal. The nice thing about the determinant is that it uses all, all the entries in a kind of mix to get a summary for what's going on. Now, how you actually calculate the determinant of the matrix depends on its size. So I'm going to only ask you to calculate, be able to calculate the matrix of a two by two matrix or the matrix of two, the determinant the of a two by two matrix or the determinant of a three by three matrix. Once you go beyond three by three, it gets very, very complicated. It's a very nice programming problem actually for those geeks out there amongst you and you know who you are. If you want to sit down and program, program this up and see, it's actually a very, very nice example of what's called recursive programming. And if I have time later on, I'll show you how you do it. But I, I, at the moment, no, just, let me just get through the, the main stuff here first. Okay? So how you calculate the determinant of a matrix depends on its size. Now, again, it's, this is only appropriate, applicable to square matrices. So we're going to look at two by two matrices first. Okay, and let me do it by means of an example. Let's look at this matrix here, A. Let's call it one, three, six, five. Now, the, the determinant of a matrix, A, has got two different notations for the same thing. The first um, notation for the determinant is just DET of A. Okay, that's what it is. So if you see DETA, you know you're going to be at, you're being asked for the determinant of the matrix A. Another way of writing exactly the same thing is taking the square brackets and converting them into two straight lines, like the modulus sign that you've seen before. Remember, modulus of minus three is three, and the modulus of minus of plus six is six. That kind of thing. It's exactly the same, but it's now generalized to square matrices. So instead of having a single number here, you've got a matrix in here. So what you do is you convert the square matrices into two straight lines like this, and you write down the elements. That's how you do. Now, this bit here, this is not, it's just notation. We haven't done any calculation yet. So this is just, these two things here are interchangeable. So sometimes you will be asked for this, Sometimes you would be asked for DETA. But what you do is exactly the same in both cases. So here's what, watch what I'm doing here now because this is really important. What you do to calculate the determinant of a matrix, of a two by two matrix, is you multiply the two diagonal elements. In this case, you get five by one. And then minus the product of the other two, which in this case is six by three. And that's it. So you multiply the main diagonal elements and you subtract the product of the other two. So in this case, you get five minus 18, which I think is minus 13. Now, in matrix land, 
Um, when you're dealing with determinants, the magic number for determinants is zero. So if a matrix has a determinant of zero, it's said to be singular. If the matrix, if the determinant of a matrix is either positive or negative, it doesn't matter how large or how small the positive or negative number is. If it's not zero, the matrix is said to be non-singular. So here it says minus three, that's less than zero. So therefore here is non-singular. That's all one word, okay? And that's a very, very important property of a matrix. It's singularity. So if its determinant is zero, it's said to be singular. If its determinant is not zero, it's non-singular or not singular. That's really important. That's a, it's, it's, a, it's a hugely important big idea in engineering analysis. Bizarrely, like what? But it's true. And again, folks, this is this is important. It doesn't matter if the determinant is, is negative or positive, as long as it's not zero. Now, sometimes you want the determinant to be zero. Sometimes you don't want the determinant to be zero. And it just, it's just a case of context. Now, but from your perspective, folks, all you need to be able to do is calculate the determinant of two by two matrix. Let's look at another example. Let's get this one, let's get the, the, this, 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 this here. So two, two, four, one. So if you look at this, folks, um, in this case now, um, the matrix is two, four, one, two. When it's written like this, between two straight lines, you know it's a single number. It's a number, not the matrix itself. So you want, you're converting the, the matrix 2412 into a number. And the way you do it, as before, is 2 by 2, two diagonals multiplied together, minus the other one, the other two, the product of the other two. And 2 by 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So what you can see here now is you see the term is 0. So this matrix here, 2, 4, 1, 2. That matrix, because now the, 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 the straight lines have been converted into square brackets, so now these, this collection of numbers is a matrix. This is singular. Okay, so that's very important, actually. Uh, amazingly important. When you're starting off this game and you're thinking, why, why are we even doing this when you do this in first year? And you forget, uh, once you get through, you'll be surprised at how often you encounter this as you go through your engineering studies. Okay. All right. That's it. So that's how you get the determinant of a two by two matrix. Now let's get that into your brains. Very, very easy. When you step up to three by three matrices, it's a completely different ballgame. It's a, it's a lot harder and the recipe is a little more, more complicated. So let me just give you an example. So let me write the matrix B as one, three, two, four, five, zero, one, minus two, and six. And I want to get the determinant of B. So here's what you do. So what you do is you focus on the elements of the first row. This, this row is really important when you're trying to get the determinant of B. So what you do is you take the first entry in the first row and you just simply write it down. And you multiply it by something. So you write down the first entry, which is one, and you're going to multiply it by something. I'm going to put the something in brackets. And here's what you multiply it by. You cover up the first row and you cover up the first column because you're, because you're talking about the, the first entry. So look, there, there you go, if you can see that. You cover up the first row and you cover up the first column. And what you're left with then is a two by two matrix, five, zero, minus two, six. And you get the determinant of that. Now, this is the recipe. I didn't make this up. I'm just telling you, don't shoot the messenger. I am just telling you what the calculation is. So it's five by six minus zero by minus two. Okay? Because that's how you calculate. So to calculate the, 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 the determinant of a three by three matrix, you're using the recipe for a two by two matrix, but you're using it three times as we'll see. So everything boils down to the, getting the determinant of a two by two matrix. So that's the reason why two by two matrices are so important, or the determinant of, of being able to calculate the determinant of a two by two matrix is so important, okay? 
Then what you do is you focus, you go to the next entry, which is three, and you write it down. Now, then, you, but you must change the sign of the entry in the second row. Why? Because this is the way God made the tournaments. Now, there is a reason why you do this, but let's just go with the fact that God made the tournaments this way. So we've got, we start out with three. We must change its sign so it's minus three. And minus three must multiply a two by two, uh, the determinant of a two by two matrix. And what's the determinant? Well, you get rid of the first row. You get rid of the second column now because you're talking about the second entry in the first row. And what you're left with then is a two by, a two, by two matrix, four, zero, one, six. And you get the determinant of that. So that's four by six minus one by zero. And finally, what you do is you take the last entry in the first row and you just plus that two. You leave the sign alone, so it's plus that. So you're adding the three different elements. And again, what you do here, guys, is you get rid of the first row and you get rid of the first column. And what you're left with then is a two by two matrix, four, five, one, minus two, and you do the calculation. So it's four by minus two, minus five by one. Okay, so when you do, when you multiply that out, guys, you get one by 30, which is 30, minus, this is 24 by three, which I think is 72, but I could be wrong. And the last one here, guys, that's minus uh, eight and minus five, which is minus 13. So I think that's minus 26. So when you do that calculation there, you get, um, I think you get minus 68, which is not equal to zero. So B is non-singular, okay? So calculating the determinant of three by three matrix is hard. So you know, it's, it's not hard. It's, it just takes a, a, a little bit getting used to. But once you got used to it, then it becomes, you know, it becomes second nature. You've got to make this second nature, okay? Because it is very, very, very important to be able to do this. Okay, let's do another one and then show you how, how to do it. Um, you can do this again if you have symbols as well as, 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 as numbers. So don't be frightened by this because it's the same old nonsense exactly the same time. So let me just, let's call this matrix D. Doesn't And we're going to get um, one, two, let me just make, make that minus two and three. And let's write one, uh, one omega, omega squared and one, zero, one. And we want to get the determinant of D. So remember what the determinant of a three by three matrix is, folks. It's the sum of three, the two by two determinants, basically, multiplied by the elements of the first row. So it's a little bit complicated, okay? so. First thing you do is you write down the first entry of the first row here, which is just one multiplied by, and you get the determinant then of this, omega, omega squared, zero, one. So it's, you multiply this by this, so you get omega by one minus zero by omega squared. Okay? The next entry then in, is, is minus two, but you must always change the sign of the second one. So this becomes plus two, Get rid of the first row as always, and now the second column. So it's one by one minus one by omega squared. And finally, folks, plus three. You write down the last entry, no changing sign here. And you get the, uh, the, 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 the determinant of the remaining two by two matrix. So it's one by zero minus one by omega. And you just do the calculation. So the first one there is omega, because omega by one gives you omega. The second one here is two into one minus omega squared. And the last one then is the first entry here is one by zero, which is zero minus omega. So it's minus three omega. So when you write that out there, you get two minus two omega minus two omega squared because this minus three omega and plus omega gives you minus two omega. And that's the answer, okay? 
very important calculation, especially for those of you who are doing mechanical engineering. Um, and rightly so, you should be doing it as well. Okay. Now, the reason why this is so important, folks, is because the recipe for calculating the determinant is exactly the same as the, the numerical recipe for calculating the moment of a force about an axis. And this is a very important concept in um, mechanical engineering. It's one of the basic things. But moment is a difficult concept because we're not used to it. So basically what you have, what, give you an idea about moment is, suppose you've got um, uh, uh, a disc. I'm a brilliant artist, so now you're going to be transported into the world of discs here straight away. And through the center of a disc, you've got a spindle, an axis, you know, um, a cylinder. And the disc is kind of welded to the cylinder, so it can't move up and down, but it can turn. It can turn around this axis. So it can turn this way, or it can turn the other way. It doesn't matter which way you turn it, clockwise or anti-clockwise. And you apply a force, F. Now, force is a vector, so it's got three components. It's going to have an I component, J component, and K component. All right? And the way you calculate the moment, what this force, how it turns, the disc about the, the axis is you calculate what's called the moment. And to calculate the moment though, you need the position vector, the vector from the axis to the point of application of the force. And that's called R, usually. And then the moment is equal to R cross F. Now this is a very alien concept. When I first came across this, when I was in your age a long time ago. I was not buying this at all. I think, well, you know, but it, this is all it is. Moment is a very, very important concept, but it's difficult to calculate. And you have to use this, what's called a vector product. It's R cross F. And how you calculate a vector product is, bizarrely, you get, you use exactly the same recipe as the determined for a three by three matrix, but the first row is special. And the first row is the vector i, the second one is the vector j, and the third component is the vector k. Remember what I was saying to you, that f is three components. It's going to have f1 along i plus f2 along j plus f3 along k. And i, j, and k are the unit vectors along the x, y, and z axes. So if you've got x, y, and z here, this is x, y, and z. This unit vector here is j, this unit vector here is i, and this unit vector here is k. So f will have a component along i, a component along j, and a component along k. Similarly, r will it be r1 along i plus r2 along j plus r3 along k. And so then what you do, folks, to calculate the moment is you write down i, j, and k, because this is the way God made the moments. Then you write down the, the components of R, which is R1, R2, and R3. Just the numbers, folks. You do not write down I, J, and K. You just write down the components, the numbers along I, the number along J, and the number along K. And similarly, then, you write down the components of F, which is F1, F2, and F3. And then you do the calculation. So you write down I, and then you get the, the matrix of the what's left here, which will be R2, F3. And let me just do an example and show you how, what's, what's going on. Okay? So the way this is going to be asked to you in the exam here, and let me just cover this up because I did this earlier on when I was trying to figure out how to, to do this video, is this. Okay? So the question is, what is the moment of the force F, which is 3i plus 2j minus 2k in this case, at a point with position vector i plus 2j plus k? So folks, what you the important thing here now is you see that F is three components. It's got an i component, j component, k component, as does R, okay? And what you're interested in here is you're interested in just the numbers. Minus two, so three, two, minus two. Here you've got a one, You've got a two and you've got a one again. So the way you do it, folks, is this. The moment then is just put the R components first, I, J, K, 
like this. And then on the second line, on the third line, you write down the components of f, which are 3, 2, and minus 2. So just forget about the other the mess here at the moment. I just did the calculation. So here what you did here, what you're doing here is you're just writing down the moment calculation first as the determinant. I, J, and K always go in the first row when you're doing a moment calculation. The next row then are the components of R, and the last row are the components of F. And I'm going to do it out here again in another example here. So basically what I want is I want I, J, and K. I want 1, 2, and 1, and I want 3, 2, and minus 2. Okay, so this, these are the components of R, these are the components of F. Now remember what we did. What we did when you're looking at it as a three by three determined, you write down the first entry in the first row, which is I. You cover up the first column and you cover up this, the, the, the first row. And what you're left with is the two by two matrix, and you get the determinant of that. So in this case, it's two by minus two minus one by two. Be careful with the minus signs, folks. It's always the main diagonal entries minus the other two. Okay, then you write down the second component or the second element in the first row, but you must change its sign. So it's written down here first as J. So you might, must write that down as minus J, and then you do the same nonsense here. You write, you get the, the matrix, the determinant of the two by two matrix that's left. So it's one by minus two minus one by three. One by minus two minus one by three. And the last one then you do is you get, um, you write down K plus K, and again, it's the same nonsense. You cover up the first row and you cover up the last column. In this case, it's one by two minus three by two. And so what you're left with then in this case is I into minus two by minus two, a two by minus two is minus four, minus two is just minus six along I. This here, guys, is minus two minus three, which is minus five, but minus one minus gives you plus. So it's plus five J. And the last one then is one by two minus three by two, so that's minus four k. So what you're left with then is minus six along i plus five j minus four k. So that is a really important calculation. You'll see that moment is a is a vector itself. But how you calculate moment um, is not easy, but it's a very important calculation. You need the components of the force, you need the components of the position vector, and the way you put them together is like this. You write it down as the determinant of a three by three matrix, because that's the way it is in physics. There's just no getting around, that's, that's what moment is. It's just bizarre, but it's true. And it's really important for you mechanical engineers. Be able to calculate the moment of a force about an axis, very important. For those of you doing electronics, it's you will see this. Uh, yeah, it's important as well, but not as crucial because moment is a very, very important idea in, in, in mechanical engineering because you're turning because of gears. Lots of mechanical engineering systems are composed of gears, and the way they move is the mo by moment. Moment moves gears, and this is how you calculate moment. And when you get an, the answer here, it's not obvious that that's what the moment is. Okay, be able to do this. Muy importante. All right, I'm going to stop here and I am going to take a break and um, I'm tired of shouting at myself and at you and hopefully you found this instructive and we'll um, and hopefully you found it legible more importantly and you can hear me importantly and um, I'm going to stop and then we'll come back for lecture five. All right.